You should be on. Hey, hi, folks. We ready? Oh. So while they finish their we're sound check, we're going to tell you who you're going to be listening to. This is going to this is too loose, and they'll be ready in just a minute. But while we have you, I'm going to talk really loud and remind you that we're here raising money right now for Pear, and that our sponsor for this hour is Tech Craver. So if you'd like to donate, yeah. you can go to 30hourday.org. Or if you're in the square and you'd like to donate, you can go to this lovely lady right here Look in the lab. Kelly. Shirt. Kelly, Kelly will help, help you donate to the charity. And Aaron's doing transition. Oh, Aaron's transitioning. Yes. And, and they're doing sound check. I think we can get off the stage. I'm not even on the camera, so I'll just wander away. <laughs>
I go sleeping in my bed alone. I want my baby to come back home. I can't cook, I can't sew. Well, tell me, baby, why did you go? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. We're the Toulouse Cajun Band from right here in Portland, Oregon. We're bringing you a little music from South Louisiana for you today.
That was a two-step called the Eunice two-step. We're gonna play a little Zydeco song from Boozoo Chavis down in Lake Charles, Louisiana. This is called Dog Hill.
Dog Hill. two-step called the Lacassine Special. Could we, could we have a little more uh, accordion in the monitor, please?
Oh, thank you so much. Like a scene special. Look out. Well, I think we have time for one more. What'll it be, boys? I think we'll play Zydeco Son Pasale.
Cajun Band, thanks for coming out and supporting the 30 hour work week. <laughs> no, nah, just kidding. Everybody, just kidding. a little bit more love day. for Toulouse. Thank you guys. That was awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, we all want them to play some more, but we've got some other really great acts coming up as well, and we have to give them a chance to come play too. And just bear with us for a moment because we have to tell you the entire reason that we had to lose here and the reason we have every other band here is because we have a 30-hour telethon and we're way, way into that 30-hour yeah, telethon. We've been doing close. this for a very long time now. Not much longer now, though. Eight hours? Yeah. Is that right? Do we actually We're have... an hour 21. We actually have only eight hours left? Mm -hmm. We're getting close. Nice. Wow, I'm not yeah. sure what to go from here, except... So, <laughs> so the idea being that this is a telethon, a charity event. Um, if you are standing here in the square and would like to donate, you can either find Kelly, who is standing by this camera over here, and she'll help you out, or we'll accept cash donations from... Kelly will allow you to donate online, so that will... Okay. With yes, her, you she, can touch her she, iPad and if you haven't used an iPad online. before, she'll let you touch her iPad. So, um, and that way it's also tax deductible. Right. It's tax deductible if you do it that way. So, and for, you, for those folks on the stream right now, you can go to 30hourday.org, 30hourday.org, and click the Donate Now button. All of your proceeds will go to PAIR at this point in time. But now we have more entertainment. That's oh, good. not us. We're not entertaining. I know. We're, we're, <laughs> we're the. I we're said the yesterday. Dull in between. The, yeah. We're the part of the telethon that I hate. We're the part of the telethon <laughs> that goes. You guys, we're doing Give this for money. a good cause. Please help pair. They're awesome. They raise funds and and mentor <laughs> at risk and homeless youth. Yeah, we stand on stage and babble. Yeah, and then we say, hey, how would you guys like some comedians? We like comedians. <laughs> so we're going to bring up Gabe Dinger, and then after that, we're going to bring up Christian Ricketts. Okay? All right. All right. Thank Here we you, go. guys. Yeah. That's still on. Thank you very much, 30-hour days, and the people still paying attention. My name is Gabe Dinger, and yes, I am wearing a sweater in July. Why? Because the weatherman said it was going to be sunny today, so I called his bluff. He was right. I am a Portland native. I was born and raised here. I love it in Portland. Portland's a very progressive city. I mean, at least we try. Like, we have a Rosa Parks Avenue, and that's nice. Except it's the only street in Portland that doesn't have a bus line attached to it. Really, Portland. We couldn't Wikipedia her first, couldn't Google her, figure something out? No? Portland recently got rated best drivers in the country. Uh, what street were they driving on? Certainly not Broadway any hour of the day. In Portland, I think we have a motto when it comes to driving. It's, hey, I drive slow, and I'm going to make sure you do too. I'm as guilty of it as the next person. Sometimes I see a car coming up behind me. I just don't like its attitude. So I slow down, and I pace with the car behind me. Beside me. I messed up my own joke. I'll be honest, comedy is very distracting in the daylight. It's generally a nighttime profession. Like, I was like, oh, I'm doing a show at noon. I'm going to stop by McDonald's and get a McMuffin. They don't even sell them this early. I don't even know what's happening right now. It's a weird time for me. Generally, my daytime is spent watching TV. I love daytime TV. Because daytime TV will make you feel bad for watching TV. 
Just watch the commercials. They know you shouldn't be there. You know, they're always questioning you. They're always assuming you're injured, you know? Like, they'll have a lawyer come on. Have you been injured in a car accident? Because it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon and you're watching TV. Why aren't you helping society? Get out of here. They'll assume you have no education. They have all the trade schools. I saw this commercial. This girl goes, I'm so happy. I'm a veterinary's assistant. And I've wanted to be a veterinary's assistant since I was five years old. Really? Since you were five years old? What kind of low standard have a five-year-old wants to be a veterinary's assistant? When I was five, I wanted to be a doctor, a, a scientist, Batman. The sky was the limit because I was five. Do you realize what a veterinary's assistant does? All the work a veterinarian doesn't want to do. Do you think a veterinarian has ever in his life seen a dead kitten? No way. He went to college for eight years, spent $100,000. Now, Karen, who went to Healed College for six months, he'll call her right in. Karen, I got a bag full of nightmares in my office. Get it out of here. Just walking down the hall. Love TV. Snapple still uses the slogan, made from the best stuff on earth. I don't think they can do that anymore. I understand in the 80s when they were going up against, like, Coca-Cola and Kool-Aid, sure, they were made from the best stuff on earth. This is a new millennium, the age of organics. Can't say that. I'm not saying abandon the slogan. I'm saying revise it. Snapple, made from stuff on earth. It's good enough. I once saw a commercial that said, shrimp so good, a shrimp would eat it. That is not a selling point to me. When I was a kid once, I saw a chicken eat a piece of chicken. And my thought wasn't, man, that must be one wonderful piece of chicken. My thought was, that is one messed up chicken. Does he know what he's doing? It's wrong. Tell you guys a little bit about myself. Growing up, I had a black stepdad. There were kids in my school who used to pick on me, make fun of me for that. So I told my stepdad, and he sat me down and had me watch the entire series of Roots. It taught me a valuable lesson. That lesson? I can't watch Reading Rainbow without crying. And for those of you that didn't get that joke, LeVar Burton, host of the kids' show, Reading Rainbow, got his big break on the series Roots. And that's fine. But you have to understand, to an eight-year-old, that messes with your kid brain. It's not right. It's like finding out Barney got his big break on Schindler's List. You know, it hurts. But I'll tell you what really upset me. It's what LeVar did next. Star Trek The Next Generation? Are you kidding? You're not really getting on another ship full of white guys, right? Just saying, bad things have happened in the past. I figured out what the most racist show in the history of television was, The Jetsons. Think about it. Based in the future, nothing but white people. Hey, kind of like Lake Oswego, if you think about it. <laughs> Little local reference. I'm just saying I'm too dark for Lake Oswego. I got lost one time. I had to get directions. They were like, what are you, some sort of Mexican? I was like, no, actually, I'm, I'm Jewish. They were like, ooh, should have stuck with Mexican. <laughs> Sorry if you're from Lake Oswego. Uh, a little bit more about Portland. Portland, we got a gang problem. Fortunately, it's not a violent gang problem. It's a stupid gang problem. They're not very smart out here. I saw vandalism for a gang, the 503 boys. Can't use your area code. This isn't California. We don't have 53 of them. I mean, who's your biggest threat? 971 friends and family? Are they dangerous? What, did the 541 inbreeders fix their truck? Good for them. I'm proud of them. I don't mind it at all. I'm not a smart man. I'll go ahead and level with you guys. I'm not a smart person. I don't know much when it comes to math. Uh, but I do know the length between my eyebrows is equal to the length of a Bic razor. So, something to think about. That's a thinker. I'm single right now, ladies. Uh, I wasn't always single. I was once in a relationship. It was my first real serious relationship, you know, where you say those three magic words, loan me money. Yeah, it was serious. But it ended. And when it, before it ended, it became a sexless relationship and I, I think we all can admit the worst relationship to have is a sexless relationship. You know, that's, that's like a starving person living with a sandwich. 
You know, but this is no ordinary sandwich. The sandwich is always prancing around with all these condiments on, making it look like it wants to be eaten. Oh, the sandwich will act like it wants to be eaten, but will it tell you how to eat it? No, because it's a sandwich. And men and sandwiches are just different. Sandwiches don't understand. Men have needs. Men have to eat. And if our sandwich isn't going to feed us, We'll go to the bathroom and snack. That's just what we do. We're guys. That's how we roll. And eventually your sandwich will catch you snacking. It'll be embarrassing. The sandwich will have questions. Do you think of me when you're snacking? Of course I think of you. I just think of you when you were a much younger sandwich. I'll be honest. This is, uh, this is not my normal scenario for comedy. It's, uh, it's weird seeing kids at a comedy show. I keep feeling like, like it's some sort of like neglect, like, what are your kids doing in a bar? And it's like, no, I'm outside. That's what I'm doing. I, uh, let's see, what else can I do for you guys here? Uh, someone heckle me? Oh, I was hoping I can get heckled. Is it, I'm getting heckled by the crew. That's good. I would love to, sir. I would love to. Oh, thank you. See, they've seen me be awesome before in front of adults. What's that? Where are my kids? I can't, I don't want to be dirty, but they're right here. That's where they are, where they belong, because I take care of myself. No way. Are you kidding? Do you look at me? I look like a 12 year old. If I had kids, like, all it would be is fighting over G.I. Joe's. That's it. Like, that's, I'd be like, give me that. My wife would be like, give it back. I'm like, no, it's mine. I paid for it. Like, no, I couldn't have kids. Could not do it. Kids frighten me. I'll be honest. I see them, and they intimidate me. Like, I don't even think, like, like, not right at the moment, but I just think, like, in 10 years, this kid could rob me, and there's nothing I could do. I'm not a fighter, people. My fighting style, I like to call the potato bug. What that is is as soon as I see any sort of confrontation, I just ball up and I roll out of the situation. That's it. That's all I do. I, uh, how long have I been up here, Whitney? Has that been 10 minutes? I'm doing this all for charity. Give a round of applause for charity. <laughs> round of applause for pandering. I'm all for that. I, uh, it was my fault my relationship ended. I'll go back into that. I, I was insecure, and women don't like guys that are insecure. Like one time we were going out, I was supposed to wear a tie, but I didn't know how to tie the tie. My girlfriend did. So the whole time she's tying my tie, all I could think is, how many of these have you tied in your past? Then she told me she knew how to tie a bow tie. I was like, what a whore. Couldn't trust her. That was the problem. I'm not good with women. That's, that's what the main, the main message of my story. I'm not good with them. I'm not good at approaching women. And women never approach me. I mean, I guess that's not entirely true. Women will approach me if, like, a lesbian sees me from behind. And it's okay to laugh. I think we all can be honest. That's a pretty sexy lesbian. That's nice right there. I have a new microphone. And, uh, really, that was my A very funny person. Give it up for Christian Ricketts. It's funny, right? Hi. Okay, good. Christian Ricketts had a very, very, very last minute family emergency. But we in Portland comedy are family and we get each other's backs, and I have his set list. So I figured we could just do his jokes together, yeah? Is that cool? Okay. So let's, let's get to the material. Uh, uh. Hi, how's everyone doing? Man, this place is packed. Uh, I know what you're all thinking. I look like Morgan Freeman and Katie Lang got together and adopted a lesbian. Yeah, you know, uh, Hey, you ever, 
think you lose your car keys and then realize you might have genital warts. <laughs> Me neither. Ah, here's some, here's some racial, race-based humor, race-based humor. Uh, I think that Morgan Freeman is kind of like the Samuel L. Jackson of black people. I like my pizza, like I like my pizza. Black women. I'm living. This is what living looks like, friend. I'm funny. You're funny, too. Are you Christian Ricketts? Oh, I believe that. I can tell that from here. You remind me of the guy who's standing right in front of me of setting my set. Hey, you ever notice how beautiful women are always so skinny? What's up with that? Here's a crazy thought. Here's another one. I thought this was going to work. Crazy thought. Here's my impression of a guy who hasn't quite figured out yelling yet. Get the fuck off my lawn! Here comes a spin doctor's reference. And there it goes. Well, that's been a solid three and a half minutes, you guys. So I uh, think we should give it up for Christian Ricketts. And uh, oh, oh, I got to do the sign off. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Check you later. Thanks a bunch, you guys. Street. We're going to have Aaron Weiss play a little transition for you, and then we're going to be joined by Portland Tycho. If you're on the stream right now, can you please go on over to 30hourday.org, 30hourday.org, and donate? Our charity right now is Pear. If you're in the square and you'd like to donate because you've been enjoying the music that we're about to have for you, then uh, you can find Kelly right here. Kelly, raise your hand. She can help you donate online with her iPad which is also a convenient excuse to play with an iPad if you haven't had a chance to do so yet.
Well, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Hopefully we warmed you up. Uh, my name is Michelle Fuji, artistic director for this group, and we are Portland Tyco. Now, how many of you have seen Tyco before? Raise your hand. Yay, thank you, big Tyco fans. And how many of you are seeing Tyco for the very first time? Can you raise your hands? Well, welcome. Taiko is a Japanese word for drum, and as you can see, we have lots and lots of drums uh, to play with within our ensemble. Um, this art form does come from Japan, but we are an Asian American drum performance group, and so we express the voices of ourselves as Asian Americans. Now, the first piece that we played is called was called Midare Matsuri. Matsuri means festival in Japanese, and, and many of the rhythms were inspired by some rhythms you might hear in a summer festival within Japan. The next piece is called Amaterasu. Now, Amaterasu is a sun goddess, and actually the story of how um, Amaterasu was enticed out of her cave to bring sunlight out, uh, out into the world was actually the story of how the first taiko came to be, because it was the sound of the taiko and everyone dancing around it and celebrating that made Amaterasu curious to come out and like today, bring her nice rays to all of us. So, this is the song that they played for Amaterasu. Mm -hmm. 